Uh, I want to read people yes. the uh, description on Am Amazon.com. You just wrote a book, independently published, yes. called Travail of an Innocent Child. And I want to tell people, this is the book that will make you understand anybody complaining about their lot in life needs to suck it up and move on. Brunel watched at 10 years old as her mother was stabbed to death in their home. She overcame being a ward of the state of Illinois, homelessness, sexual and physical abuse, to attend law school and eventually become an attorney. Talk about your book, hon. You know, um, this book was as a book that I wrote back in 2008. And I kind of I self-published it then, and then I kind of sat on it. Um, and then, like, right in the summertime of uh, last year, I was going to publish it again, and then I got um, pulled into the election. So I put the uh, book off the campaign, but it's a book about um, overcoming every adversity. It, it talks about um, my life with my mom. You know, I had a mother who was addicted to drugs and to a fast life. She did some prostituting and then she was murdered, and then I ended up in foster care where I was told that I would never be anything but a drug, you know, but a, but a, I would never be anyone, that I would have some man beating on me for the rest of my life, that I would never accomplish anything, that I would be like my mother. And um, I heard that every day for five years. I ended up leaving that foster care placement to uh, another foster care placement, then a group home, and I left that group home at 18 with a bag and a dream to become a lawyer. And so this book kind of goes through my journeys of um, sexual abuse that I experienced as a child, physical abuse, mental abuse, all the things that can happen sometimes when you lose a parent. And sometimes it even happens at the hands of parents. And mm -hmm. so it was in my heart to put the book out because there are so many people out here who are hurting who, um, you know, feel alone, like they're the only one who's going through something. And um, so it was in my heart and my spirit to put the book out, to let people know that, you know, you can overcome even some of the worst, um, sleaziest things in life. So that's what this book about. It, at the end, of course, there's hope. There's always hope. Yeah. Well, I got to tell you, uh, one of the things I, I always like to talk about when I meet special people is, you know, angels. There, there are angels here on Earth, and and I yeah. have absolutely zero doubts that you are uh, one of those one of those angels. And your story uh, now. So now I met you during the the lead up to the presidential election, and you were yeah. you were working for uh, the Trump campaign and diversity outreach. I want you to explain to people your your dem your your political life because. The transition of where you were to where you came from is as amazing a story as anything. You know, it, it's like um, be, coming up the way that I did, knowing, you know, being treated like that and misused and abused, it made me not want to ever see anyone abused or misused. And so, you know, in my own state, I ran for lieutenant governor. Uh, back in 20, I would think 2013, 2014, we got about 29 percent of the vote against an incumbent governor, which is unheard of. Uh, uh, Keo Hardiman was my running mate, and we were the first ever African American governor and lieutenant governor ticket ever. Um, and we, 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 we did everything we could to fight for our state, where there's a lot of poverty in the southern parts of the states and a lot of children being abused and hurt and a lot of um you know kids out of work and stuff we decided that we wanted to stand up for them we didn't win but you know we opened the door for better and, and you know for better change in, in in illinois and so interestingly enough i'm a democrat and i supported bernie sanders during the uh primaries you know i i, I didn't I, I couldn't support hillary clinton i didn't believe that she was the candidate that our um party should uh, use and so i got behind bernie sanders well of course you know they rigged it against bernie sanders her and the dnc and president obama i'm convinced they all worked together against bernie sanders and so uh essentially i couldn't vote for hillary so it was um my husband you know, he was like, uh, honey, baby, sweetie, you know, uh, you know, Donald <laughs> Trump is the next president. And I was like, oh, God, <laughs> I'm like, Donald Trump, no way. No, never. He was like, yes, he is. He's the next president. My husband is a Republican. 
And so he was like, I need you to put your voice behind him. I said, never over my dead body. No, never. But anyways, um, I started listening to Donald Trump, and I said, he doesn't sound too different from Bernie Sanders to me, really. Um, He's an (laughs) outsider, too. And he wants to help the nation. And, you know, we started, I was in prayer about it or whatever, and the Lord gave me the green light. But the most interesting thing is this. Um, and I think I told you this before. My husband and I saw something that I don't think a lot of people saw. And what it was is if Donald J. Trump, our president, did not win, that they were going to go after him. They were going to corrupt, you know, like bankrupt him, yep, take everything yep. he had. Then they were going to take everything his children had. And then his grandchildren would still have that stain on them all those generations later. And so my husband and I, when we got behind them, it wasn't just because of that. It's, I've been bullied. I know what it's like when there's the jealousy and the hate. When people, when you're a star, people can't stand to see you shine. And so when you're winning and you're doing things the right way or you're standing up for people, there are people that will try to destroy you. And that's what well, happened with Donald J. Trump, our president. The media, the DNC, the RNC, and all of these people try to destroy him. And so when I got behind him, we stood for him all over. We were on television up day and night, you know, with no pay. Nobody paid us. We did that on our own to help him. And uh, thank God, thanks be to God, he became the president on November 8th. But we knew from, my husband knew from the beginning, but once I got behind him, I knew that he was going to be the president of the United States. And and so, as you know, uh, Mr. Schilling, we lost everything. Our practice is gone. We've been blackballed in my state. And so I said, this is the perfect time until my president calls me to work. As you know, I applied to work um, in the White House with my president. And so um, until he calls me, the only thing I can do is, you know, put the book out and trust God on that. Right. Well, your your trust is in the right uh, place. But uh, listen, I you 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 have sacrificed and you have paid a price for doing the things that you do, and 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 I certainly haven't sacrificed or paid a, a significant price. I, I've felt the the wrath of the of the left, uh, being a conservative in Massachusetts. But I want you to tell people the thing I found fascinating about it was when you ran for office. You were you were running against Republicans, but you also talked about the fact that your own party sabotaged you. Oh, absolutely. You know, we ran against the Democratic incumbent governor by the name of Pat Quinn, and he was in some nasty scandal where they had misused $54 million that could have given jobs and things to the young people. And so we stood up for the young people of the state. We stood up for the elderly. We still stood up for the poor because the Democratic Party was doing absolutely nothing. And we said, look, we're Democrats. We're Americans. We have the right to run. And so we stood up and we ran. We were up and down this state, traveling everywhere, shaking hands left and right. And um, the party refused to back us, give us a dime. Uh, The party blacked us out in the media. I was blackballed at that time in my state as well. People were told not to hire me. The president at the time, uh, President Barack Obama, uh, sent Hillary Clinton at that time, believe it or not, to campaign against us with the governor. And so basically they just, it, it was like, if you're not part of this exclusive club, if you're not part of this, if uh, you haven't got yourself knees dirty, so to speak, you can't just come in and run. And so they did everything to destroy us and beat us down in this but, state. But, and But Brunel, are you not, are you not... The, the picture perfect liberal poster child for them. Uh, you're you're a, a black woman. You have come out of nowhere to make yourself uh, uh, something, which is, the story is amazing. I, I would have expected the exact opposite. Roll the red carpet out and, 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 and make sure you walk into office. But I think it's a testament to how corrupt D.C. is and, and well, our politics are. When, it's yep. hypocrisy. And so, you know, I'm a very conservative Democrat. I'm probably like tipping at that edge of being a Republican. You know what I mean? Right. It's like, right. it's so I'm very conservative. Oh, hey, listen, hon, 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 stop. You're yeah. Republican. You went out and you were the <laughs> you were head of diversity outreach for the Trump campaign. You are firmly in our camp and you ain't going anywhere. Well, you know, I voted Trump. I'm a Democrat who voted Trump. And so it was like, 
I had never voted for a Republican in my life. Oh, you could not have convinced me. But I know that the man that I stood by, that my family lost everything over, I know that he is the man that God ordained. God chose him to be the president of the United States. And get a lot of people saying, well, he's got this problem. He can't talk. He's not doing this right. Well, God uses imperfect people. If you go to the Bible, you see Moses, you see Samson, you see David, you see Gideon and all of these people. They were all imperfect people used by a perfect God. And so all of us are. Donald Trump, our president, has imperfections. Don't get me wrong, he does. But let me tell you something. Through this journey that I've taken, so to speak, with him, even though I have not been in there with him personally, um, I've been on the outside looking in. I am so very connected to our president spiritually, and God truly has made me love him from my soul. I, I, I want to see him do well. I want to see him soar. But as you can see, uh, Mr. Schilling, the Democratic Party, the media, they have not stopped. So my question is, what is it that you're hiding that you don't want to let this man do his job? Here's the thing. At the end of the day, uh, you're on the right team. And you know, as well as I do, that it might be six hours, six days, six weeks, six months, six years from now. You're going to look back, like I've done so many times, and think, Wow, God, you were way, way smarter than I gave you credit for because yes. all of this was meant, you know, because we try to, to, to solve things. We try to solve the unsolvable and the way he moves in our lives and the way he moves our lives are, yes. are so far beyond a lot of what we can comprehend. And, and uh, you know, I, I, it's, it's powerful. And, and uh, your, again, your story to me is, is one of the things that gives me hope because I really believe we're in a very dark time in this country um, and – I, you know, I, I hold out. Listen, here's the thing I always try and tell people. I've read my Bible. I know how the game ends. So it, to that yeah, degree, I'm okay. We right, win. right. I'm okay. <laughs> but 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 I'm also a parent, and I look at my kids, and I, I worry for the safety of my children and the world that, that, that they're being handed. And and this country has become something uh, that, that for, for eight years I didn't know. It, I didn't recognize it. It, it, it was unrecognizable. And, and for, for people of color to go against Obama, you've been called Uncle Tom, the, the you know, other things that I'll I won't repeat. I, can't. You many cool. I can name it all for you because let me tell yep. you, again, um, after we ran, you know, of course, I was able to salvage back my business. It took a long time, maybe about a, a long time, put it like that. But anyways, I got my reputation back, you know, and, you know, I was back. I was good again. And, it's something when your own people turn on you and call you mm. pickaninny and coon and house nigga and, and you know, that I'm going to, uh, the only thing that Donald Trump is going to want me to do in his White House is clean his toilets and shine his shoes because he's a racist. And I get people telling me that every day. He's a racist. Look at his White House. You apply to the White House when he's going to get your job. You're going to scrub his floors. That's all you can do. And you And I have to think about the prayers and I have to think about all that I've learned about this man, our president, um, and I say I reject that, and I know that right. God put him in there. And, you know, let me tell you something, uh, uh, Mr. Shelley. It's more of us out here than it is bad, believe it or yeah, not. That's it's what we more want. good people. It's more that's, good people. But it's just like no, the police department. You get people that say, oh, police are bad. But it's only a, a small few that's making a right. lot of noise. That's all. Right. Well, you're you're one of the reasons why November eighth ended the way it did. There's no doubt in my mind because I think I anybody so that much. well, listen, anybody that that is open to Bible uh, in their lifetimes and heard you speak understands where you've come from to where you are uh, is a God driven story, and and as a country yeah. founded on Judeo Christian principles, even though I know liberals hate to hear that, um, giving glory to God yeah. is they they ro- they roll their eyes because they can't get any political points off that. Those but I thank extreme, God for them. Extreme left people, extreme left. There are yep. people we, in the middle, moderate and conservative, yes. who don't feel that way, who don't want the country to burn, who don't want to destroy our nation. And those are right. the Democrats who voted for Donald Trump, our president. That's exactly right. We're the ones yeah. who no. stood up and got behind him. Hey, Brunel, uh, listen, it is always a pleasure to talk to you, Miss. Tra- Travail of an Innocent Child. You can find it, it on Amazon.com. Of an innocent child, yeah. And it and is a breathtaking, a breathtaking story. I highly recommend it. Uh, you can find it on Amazon.prime. Uh, Travail of an Innocent Child. Brunel, ma'am, it is always great to talk to you. Please tell your husband I said hello. 
I sure will. God bless you and God bless America. And guess what? God bless Donald J. Trump, our president. <laughs> you take care.